Unit 2, Lesson 5, Working Conditions. Unit 2, Lesson 5, Vocabulary. Industrialization begins to spread throughout Europe. As William Cockerill made his way to Belgium, with his son, built a large industry there. Germany also had pockets of industry developing as they imported British engineers and built railways throughout their country. Other regions in Europe began to industrialize. One example would be northern Italy and their textile industry of fine made garments. In other areas, the social structure and geography halted it. Let's take a look at the working conditions of the Industrial Revolution. Entrepreneurs sold shares of stock or rights of ownership. Okay, these businesses that had shares became known as corporations. It gave the owners the ability to raise large amounts of capital or money. Some examples of those would be Standard Oil by John D. Rockefeller and Carnegie Steel. So this image shows various factories. Factories, we remember, housed the machines that produced the goods manufactured during the Industrial Revolution. Factories made use of the assembly lines, the method that was used in factories to produce goods faster. You know, instead of one person completing all tasks to produce a good, the process was broken into small parts. Each person was assigned a skilled task. This was called specialization or the division of labor. The assembly line was an improvement over the domestic, domestic system, which was when people made goods by hand at home. The economic impact of factories or how it changed the economy is that the output of goods increased, so more goods were produced daily. The quality of manufactured goods increased as goods were better than ever before. There was more standardization in the process. And the cost of goods decreased. Since more was being produced, the price of the goods, the individual products, went down. An example would be before, you would have one doll made per day by hand, and with about 500 workers, you could have 500 dolls made per day. Each of those dolls before, made by hand, might cost $500. Now, after the assembly line process put in place by industrialization in factories up and down England, the process was sped up so that now you can have 500 dolls made per day by a factory. And now each doll costs roughly $10. Factory life wasn't for everybody. There was dangerous machinery. It was dirty. The places were cramped. The warehouses were cramped with far too many workers for such a small amount of space. And the work was often repetitive or monotonous. Factory work was often piecework where workers received a fixed, amount, um, a fixed amount of pay for each finished piece. Most piecework like that was performed in sweatshop-like conditions, where employees worked long hours at low wages and under poor working conditions. This increased worker productivity and changed the relationship between the worker and the product created. Speaking about that assembly line part of the factory work, Factory workers performed one small part of production repeat, repeatedly and often never saw the finished product. This type of division of labor into separate tasks was much more efficient, but took the pride and joy out of work. The division of labor, some owners viewed their workers as parts of the machinery itself. Unlike smaller and older businesses where owners interacted with their employees, in factories, most owners never interacted with workers. What was factory life like for workers? Well, workers worked by the clock. They could be fired for being late, talking, or even refusing to do a task. 
those places were not safe at all. Um, even though children often performed unsafe work and worked in dangerous, unhealthy conditions regularly. An example of the dangers, young women in the textile mills of Massachusetts, that's the United States, died at an average age of 26, constantly inhaling cotton dust, working long hours in unventilated rooms lit by oil lamps. This was commonplace throughout not only the United States, but throughout the world during the Industrial Revolution. Quick visual summary of what we've talked about so far. So back to those working conditions in the factories. Well, conditions in the factories were harsh or horrible. Factories were often poorly ventilated and the air was stale and dirty. They were poorly lit with gas or oil lamps and the machines themselves were incredibly dangerous. Jobs in the factories paid very little. Men were, were required to work at least 14 hours a day. And because of the low wages paid, families couldn't be supported by one person alone, by the man of the house. So women had to go work in the factories. Eventually, even the children went to work in the factories, as we learned last week. Working conditions in the factories, well, they weren't always good. Injuries occurred often, and if you were hurt, if you were unable to do your job, you lost your job. There was no financial compensation, no medical insurance. The managers or overseers of these factories were all abusive to all the workers, especially the children who worked for them. During this time, there was a huge gap between the rich and the poor in society the rich or the haves had this bourgeois lifestyle they thrived on the luxuries of the industrial revolution while the poor or the have-nots were the overworked individuals the destitute the people struggling just to find a meal or a clean place to sleep this gap between the rich and the poor the haves and the have-nots led to class tension so we're talking about tension between the haves, uh, like an upper class filled with doctors and lawyers and factory owners, the middle class that had the shippers and merchants, and the lower class, which was the factory overseers, versus the have-nots, which was the working class. Um, and one of the forms of tension was that members of the working class, the daily workers, were being replaced by machines in factories throughout the country. So we have this group that begins to form um, called Luddites. They were rebels, and they went around destroying machines and factories and starting riots. And so this leads to a push for better working conditions. When workers began to form labor unions, <laughs> the unions, of course, were not seen favorably by the factory owners. So what were labor unions? Well, they're groups or organizations that encouraged worker organized strikes to demand increased wages and improved working conditions. They lobbied parliament for laws to improve the lives of workers, including specifically for women and children. And they wanted a workers uh, like rights and collective bargaining between labor and management to ensure equality and safety and fairness for all workers. Well, most employers, most factory owners disliked and feared unions. Some took steps to stop the unions. Some of those steps were forbidding union meetings, firing union organizers, forcing new employees to sign yellow dog contracts. Those were contracts that made them promise never to join a union or even participate in a strike. Other employers refused to bargain collectively when strikes did occur, not wanting to appear weak and give in to the union. And then lastly, they would refuse to recognize unions as the workers' legitimate representatives, thereby taking away any power the union's collective had in bargaining for fair conditions, better wages for the workers themselves. <clears throat> 
So, of course, there are numerous positive effects of industrialization. Obviously, increased world productivity with the growth of the railroads. There's more money floating around. With more money, it equals more technology and more inventions. Those new inventions improve the quality of life for many. Laborers eventually organize into unions and they help improve working conditions. Laws were even enacted to enforce health and safety codes in cities and factories. Those factories and the city jobs create new opportunities for women. We see a rise of the middle class, both in size and power, and in their personal wealth. And so the social structure that had predominated society before of the haves and the have-nots becomes more flexible as people are now able to move up the ladder based on the merits of their work. There were tremendous negative effects too. The child labor, for one, that was used in factories and mines was abhorrent. Miserable and dangerous working conditions in the cities, in the factories, in the mines. The monotonous work with heavy, noisy, repetitive machinery broke people down, literally. Long working hours before unions came into place, six days a week for very little pay sometimes as much as 18 to 20 hours per day, even for children. Diseases such as pneumonia and tuberculosis spread through factories because of their dirty and cramped conditions. And this labor unrest that had some positive effects often led to demonstrations which were sometimes violent. And that violence was when many workers lost their lives.